Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another Kylab Gaming production. Today I am going to be telling you about one of the scariest and potentially one of the worst exploits in Java history. I will be telling you how this exploit works, why it is so bad, the problems it has caused in Minecraft and around the internet, how you can protect yourself and how to check if you have been infected. But quickly, before we dive into the video, I have to give the absolute legends that sponsor these videos some screen time. Huge shout out to all of my members. If you would like to get your skin and name in a video, be sure to join now for as little as $0.6 a month. Basically the MOAB of exploits finally got re unleashed onto the world. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing. Cloudflare and Amazon, which together make up a major backbone of the entire internet, all could be vulnerable to this zero day that allows for remote code execution. Okay, so before I tell you how this exploit works, I'd like to make it very clear that my knowledge of Java is very limited. I have, however, been talking with one of my members, Crazy Monkey, who happens to own the Catalyst client. Huge shout out to him for helping me understand and recreate the exploit locally for this video. This exploit has been named Log4j after the framework in which it was discovered. To start off I am going to explain what the Log4j framework does and what it is used for. Log4j is a logging framework for Java. Developers add the package to their programs to log certain events while the program runs. Basically, as the program runs, the logger will write these events to a .log file with the time that they happened. To give you an example, the Minecraft client has a built-in logger. If I start my game and join a server like 2b2t.org for example, everything will be logged. To find the log, I need to open my .minecraft folder and in the logs folder there will be a file called latest.log. If we open this, you can see all of the processes that ran behind the scenes. You can also see that I joined 2b2t. While this may seem useless, this is actually extremely helpful for debugging and finding issues in your software. If your game crashes for example, you could see exactly what time it crashed along with what process caused the game to crash. This example works best with a server where this information would be more helpful. It is also important to state that both the Minecraft client and servers log information to a .log file using log4j. More about this later though. To summarize everything, in computing, a log file is a file that records events that occur in a program, usually an operating system or messages between different users. While logging is the act of collecting and storing this information to the .log file. The last thing I need to tell you about is JNDI or Java Naming and Directory Interface. This is an API developed by Java that allows applications to discover and look up data and resources via a name. What does that actually mean? Well, as I understand it, it allows developers to connect their programs to external directories or databases. I am also going to mention LDAP later in this video. LDAP is basically just the connection between the program and the directory or database, while JNDR can then be used to search these directories or databases for specific information. Around two years ago, an exploit in JNDR was discovered that allowed malicious people to inject code into Java applications. This has already been patched and for the most part is no longer a working exploit. I will talk more about this later in the video. Now that we know what log4j is intended to be used for and what JNDR is, let's have a look at how they are being exploited to attack Minecraft servers and players. I was not able to find the name of the player that first found and used this exploit, but he discovered that log4j was still vulnerable to the JNDR exploit that had previously been patched. This is how the exploit is used. The attacker sends a message in chat containing the previously mentioned JNDI exploit. Log4j then attempts to log this information to the .log file, but in the process it runs the malicious command. This is known as an RCE or remote code execution exploit because the attacker can trick the server into downloading and running Java classes with whatever code he likes. The server does not question anything and simply executes the classes. A few hours after the log4j exploit became public, Microsoft released an update to the Minecraft launcher that patched the vulnerability client-side. This means that players who closed out of their games and restarted Minecraft would have been somewhat safe from the exploit. Minecraft servers on the other hand were not so fortunate. 
While there are patches that the owners can put in place to stop the exploit, they are not automatic. This means that all servers are vulnerable until the owner shut them down and implemented the patches. As you can imagine, this caused thousands of servers to go offline. Servers like 2b2t, 9b90 and all of the PvP servers were offline for a few hours, until they restarted with the patches in place. To demonstrate how powerful this exploit was and still is, I have started my own local host 1.12.2 paper server. I am going to attack it with a modified LDAP server that Crazy Monkey made which contains custom payloads that get remotely executed. This basically just means I am going to attack the server with JNDI and then upload a Java class to the server that will then be executed. I'd like to make it very clear that this example is run locally and I'm not actually attacking someone's server. For video purposes, the computer on the right is the server and the computer on the left is my computer performing the attack. Step 1. First I'm going to start the server and connect to it in Minecraft with localhost as the IP. Step 2. I'm going to open CMD and run the jar file that Crazy Monkey made for me. Once the jar runs, I can choose from a few different attacks. I am first going to demonstrate the pop-up attack. Step 3. Now I need to open chat and type dollar symbol followed by an open curly bracket, jndr, colon and then paste in the code generated by crazy monkey's jar file and then close it off with another curly bracket. When I send this message the exploit is triggered and as you can see I have successfully tricked the server into doing my bidding. To fully understand why this happens I have to refer to everything I spoke about previously. As soon as the message is sent the jndr exploit that was found and patched two years ago will be activated and when log4j attempts to log the message to the console and to the .log file it will execute the custom java class written by crazy monkey in this case an innocent pop-up window the reason remote code execution exploits are so scary is that the attacker can run any malicious code of their choosing on your computer or the server your computer does not question what the code does or who is trying to run it it is even scarier when you consider that the vulnerability lies within Java, which as I'm sure you have seen runs in over 3 billion devices worldwide. <laughs> Thankfully, it is only older Java versions that are affected. This particular exploit was patched in Java 8 version 121, so anything running Java before this version is vulnerable. While this exploit was first discovered and abused in Minecraft, it did not take long before people realized that they could use this exploit against real world companies. Some of the companies and services that may be vulnerable include parts of Adobe, Amazon, Steam, Cloudflare, Tesla and Twitter just to name a few. Even the mighty Apple was affected when users found iCloud to be vulnerable. This just shows how bad this exploit is and how many consequences it has in the real world. I find it kind of ironic that it was first discovered and used in a virtual block game. While I can't prove that this originated from 2v2t players, I assume it did and I can't help but think to myself that 2v2t is like the problem child of Minecraft. Not all but a large portion of dupes, bugs and exploits originate from 2v2t and its player base. Crazy Monkey also pointed out another huge consequence this vulnerability can cause. Client devs can now easily hide a single line of code in their clients that would allow them to exploit this vulnerability on the user's computer. If you are a client dev, please be extra careful with users contributions and if you are a client user, I would highly recommend staying away from skids and unknown clients. Thankfully, there are a few ways to protect yourself and stop the exploit altogether. I'll talk more about this later in the video though. Yet another thing Crazy Monkey found is that a large portion of the patches being implemented by servers stop log4j from executing the code. However, it is still possible to make the server ping a specific address. Using this, the attacker could theoretically listen for the ping and find the true IP of the server. While this doesn't sound so bad, the true IPs of servers are always hidden to avoid the DDoS attacks. If an attacker got the server's true IP, he would then be able to lag or even take the server offline with a big enough DDoS attack. Even if the server has DDoS protection as that is only covering the public IP address.
Now that we have a basic understanding of how this exploit worked and how it was used, I think it is important to talk more about how you can protect yourself and how you can check if you were infected. It is important to note that this information is aimed towards players and not server owners. Thankfully, as previously mentioned, Microsoft have already patched the launcher by updating to a new version of Log4j. With that being said, if you are using a third party launcher and they have not specifically stated that it has been patched, it is safe to assume that you are still vulnerable. Unfortunately, even with the updates provided by Microsoft, you may still be vulnerable, especially on older versions of Minecraft. I highly recommend updating to the newest version of Java and updating your Forge and Fabric to the newest release. Releases. Taking these steps will greatly decrease your chances of getting infected. You should also only join servers that have implemented patches to stop the exploit. Links to all of the updated resources are in the video's description. If you have played Minecraft on a public server since the 10th of December, you may have been infected. To check if you have been infected, you will need to download Notepad++. This is a free and open source advanced text editor. I have linked it in the video's description for anyone that would like to download Download it. Once you have downloaded and installed Notepad++, you can open it and in the top right corner you can click search. In the drop down that appears, click on find files. In the find what box type jndi colon ldap, in the box below that, select a new directory and navigate to your .micro folder, then select the logs folder. Now click find all. Don't be too alarmed if it comes up as positive since the launcher has been patched. A positive hit does not necessarily mean that you were infected. Obviously, you still hope to see no hits though. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to find the malicious code if you have been infected, as remote code execution gives the attacker free roam over your computer. With that being said, I am not 100% sure how to help you if you have been infected. It may sound like overkill, but I personally would save all of my important data and factory reset my computer. Before I end the video, I have to give a huge shout out to Crazy Monkey and the Catalyst client. This video would not have been nearly as technical or helpful without him. I'm going to link his client Catalyst down below for anyone that would like to check it out. If you found this video helpful, please consider sharing it with your friends or in Discord servers. More people should be aware of how bad this exploit was. Anyways, thank you so much for watching to the end of my video, I really appreciate your time. Seeing as you are still here, I assume you enjoyed the video, so please consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing. I've also recently made a Kylab Gaming memberships area on my channel, so be sure to check out the benefits with the join button. Quick shout out to all of my members for all of the support, they help me make higher quality content more often. Anyways, it has been your boy Kylab, peace in the Middle East.